Hey there, it's Adrian over at The Samplist, and today we are checking out Round Wound from Modwheel. Round Wound is a guitar texture library performed by guitarists Hugo Butler and Steve Roach. The samples were recorded using three different mic positions, near, mid and far, in the beautiful Stella Maris Chapel. Each mic position can be enabled and disabled, panned and transposed up or down one octave. Round Wound weighs in at just over 10 gigabytes and is priced at 69 US dollars, although tax may apply depending on your local geographic laws. You will need the full version of Contact, although this library will work in Contact Player, it is not recommended as the matches will only load in demo mode and they will also time out after 15 minutes. The library is intended for use with a MIDI controller keyboard that has 61 keys or more. Without further ado, let's hear what this library sounds like as we take a little tour through some of the patches.
Let's take a look at the interface itself. There are 64 patches in total, divided into six folders. Pads, textures, two guitars, leads, bold guitar, and misfits. There's also a separate folder containing multi-channel outputs. Now, these are exactly the same patches as, you, as are in these six folders here. But the microphones are pre-routed for you. So when you've got the near, the mid, and the far, these all come out of output one. You select the patches from the instruments folder. If you select the patches from the multi-channel patches, the amp section, which is your near, that is pre-routed to outputs one and two. The mid is outputted to three and four, and the far is outputted to five and six on the contact mixer interface. So that gives you even more control of the sound field to deliver an immersive experience. By disabling the microphones, you are actually unloading the samples, which can really help if you have a large project. For example, this is only using 1.59 meg, but if I take the amp off, 
the near. It suddenly goes down to 0.99. If I take the mid off, it goes down to 0.59. And just to prove the point, take them all off, uses nothing. So this is really, really handy if you've got a really big project. Uh, it helps you to sort of like thin things down a little bit. You can also adjust the pan and the attack and the release of the sound with these particular knobs here. You also have another knob below called transpose. And this allows you to pitch this actual sample from the microphone up or down an octave. And the thing with that is they're not incremental. It is either up an octave or down an octave. There's no in between because that would have made the sample app even bigger than it actually is. So for example, if I just take off mid and far, just concentrate on the amp. Turn the sound up a bit, there we go. And just turn it down. So that just allows you to sort of like model the sound a little bit more to, to whatever you're intending for your project. So the um, blend slider, which is this little wonderful speaker thing here, and it allows you to mix between the stretch or slice samples. So if you use your mod wheel, these are pre-rooted. So your mod wheel will alter how it morphs between the two sets of samples. So you, stretch, you are moving between stretch, time stretch and slice samples by doing that, which is really, really a cool effect actually when you look at that. Your blue section underneath, one of the keys, is the actual playable area for each sample, so take particular note of this. If you try and play a key outside, you will get no sound. You've got to play notes that are in the blue area. Well, that's worth, uh, worth noting. So the next bit that I need to show you is actually the lead patches because you get a slightly different interface for the lead patches. I'll just take lead four just as an example. Just load that up. The solo button makes a patch monophonic and you engage it by just clicking on the button itself. And below we have another setting called Legato. Now when this is engaged, the next note you play will pick up where the last one left off. It won't re-trigger the start of the sample, so that gives you a nice continuation and flow of the sound. So if I just play quick sort of like arpeggio there. Now if I do it with Legato on, see how it gets a bit quieter as you play it? That's because of the way the sample's shaped. So that's a great way of sort of like feel, making the sound sort of continue rather than feel as always something different, something new, which is which is a handy technique. So the last one we have, we have glide. Now glide is your usual. If I just put solo there, is your usual thing to just give a more of a um, old school style lead if you're going all solo and uh, want to rock out a little bit. So next we have the filter section, which is engaged by just clicking on the word filter. If you click it and it's dark, that means it's off. If I click it now and it's on, light, that means it's on. And that gives you a standard high pass, low pass, and a mid band frequency. So the rhythm section next to it is actually linked to the volume and can play up to 16 step sequence. So clicking sync will sync it to the host tempo. So if you unclick it, you can set your own rate. And if you click it, you can sync it to whatever you want by just holding, clicking, holding the mouse and then scrolling up and down, moving your mouse up and down. And then you can get it to whatever rate you wish it to have. And then we now have something very interesting. It's called a scatter box. This is Mod Wheel's synced and experimental convolution IR effects rack. This is where experimentation comes in as each setting affects the sound in different ways. So let's just take this. If I switch this on. We have like a, a delay on there, but then you have all these to choose from. So if I want ascending sixteenths, don't know what this is going to sound like. Mm -hmm. 
Then if you click on the sync menu, you actually have separate ones for say atmosphere. So I can have, um, let's say a Leslie. And then let's go for phantoms. Now phantoms is really interesting because you can actually choose the key. Now if I play something in C minor, Gives a nice ghosting effect, which is really great way of shaping your sound here. And then you also have the obligatory arpeggiator on these lead patches here, where you can sort of program in a short sequence. That arpeggiator is not actually in all the patches, as we'll show here. I've just loaded up textures, and I only have the FX and the main here. So let's now see, more to the point, let's now hear what it sounds like in the context of a composition. see what's actually going on in this composition. On the first track we have sort of like a percussive element and I'll just play that in its isolation for you. And what I've used for this patch is the deep and percussive tremolo effect. And as you can see there I'm actually using mod wheel just to create a bit of texture on the sound this is in the misfits folder so when you play these sounds i do strongly recommend you play with the mod wheel on it because it just adds some life to the sound something different on the next track we have some textures just to add some sort of atmosphere to build tension at the beginning of the track. And these come from the texture section. What I've done here is actually layered two of the sounds together, the number 9 and 14 from the textures, and then panned them just to give some width to the stereo spectrum. On the next two, we do have some pads, and I'll just play them together. Just open the first pad. And again, you see I'm using the mod wheel here. Look what's going on on the second pad. We're using number nine on here, and again, we're messing around with the mod wheel. And it just adds a bit of sort of depth and to the sound. 
character. First pattern. See how the graphic shows what's happening all the time. So that's blending between the, the time synced sort of um, samples which give the movement to the actual pads itself. We then have some leads to play with. I'll just turn this solos off on there. So on the leads, uh, I'll just solo that out. Again, I've duplicated the track. So on the first one, we have this sound. I'll just wind that back. see the mod wheels being used again. Go over to the thing the second leading. Now this is where the magic is happening. Because I'm using the Leslie from the Misfit section. That just sort of gives a bit more tension for me in, in the track. And then what we have to round it all off, just to close these windows, we have a sequence arpeggio interplaying between each other. So the sequence itself is playing this. And what I've done is I've played with the scatter box and brought in a tempo synced crunch delay. So that just repeats through that track just to give it a little bit of sort of like tonic tonal center. And then we have the arpeggio playing as a last item here. Well, the arpeggio itself is something I've just programmed into round round here, switched it on, done eighth notes, zigzag up and down, and just messed around with some velocities. And then together, they all fill out. And again, with the scatter box, I've put it on tempo synced with wide force feedback. So that's what's going on in this track. And together as a whole, it's quite nicely. And now to my thoughts on this library. This is a really interesting take on a what is really a crowded area of the sample market. What Mod Wheel have done to the guitar is very interesting and listening to the patches you would be hard pressed to work out what instrument was actually used. This is really good and along with the addition of the Scatterbox IR effects rack it makes Around Wound stand out from other libraries and is begging you to experiment and not just patch surf. The info section of for each patch is great addition. What would be even better is if the text was moved down as the header does not contrast well against the text and can be a bit hard to read, but that's just a real minor nitpick and I would have no hesitation recommending this library if you are looking for some guitar textures in your next production. As I played through this library, I was grateful that the patches weren't plastered in effects. This allows you to use the patch as a building block to make something unique for your next project. I would like to thank Modwheel for sending across Around Wound for a review. It is very much appreciated. And I hope you really enjoy this video. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel and visit thesamplist.com. And we'll catch you in the next one.